Friday. I got my blaster set up for review. Wait, this isn't the blaster I'm reviewing today. I'm actually gonna review the Fang QS4. Wait, this isn't the blaster I'm gonna review either. I was actually gonna review the Elite 2.0 Quad Fire. Wait a minute. Are these all the same blaster? That's right. It's the Cheap Blaster Showdown episode. So if you guys can't tell, all three of these blasters are exactly the same. This is not a conventional review. This is a competition to see which one of these three is the best. And, and quite frankly, after this, I'm, I'm not even going to keep any of them. I'm going to sell them and I'm going to get a Persuader instead because that blaster is the same thing except it's better in every single way. But for convenience, all three of these blasters should be available on the market still uh, this one's questionable i don't know if you can still buy this one i've seen this one places but it might not be available everywhere in the world just saying so before we even get into this i need to clarify why this blaster is so common and it's simple the blaster itself is a really good idea. If we take a look at the smallest offering, the Fang QS4, you can see that this is pretty much like the most optimized pistol they've ever come up with. It's the same size as a fire strike or a vault, but it holds four darts instead of just one or two or three, which makes it like the most convenient little pistol you could possibly have in your pocket. Hence why it's been copied 560,000 times throughout the years. Now clearly I don't have every single one ever made such as the optic, however the ergonomics on these three and generally the design is the same throughout. So what I say about one will most likely apply to all of them. So with that said, let's get into the comparison. Round one! ergonomics. These three blasters have completely different ergonomics. The quad fire has this very smooth filleted design with this sort of ridge pattern on there to give you the nicest, cleanest grip possible. The quadrat says, screw it, have whatever this thing is, and let's put some duct tape around it. It is beyond uncomfortable, especially right up there. It digs into your hands a lot. I do not like holding this blaster at all. And the fang is actually better than on release. This kind of pad thing right here gives you a comfy enough place to hold, even though I don't really like these ridges all that much. So for ergonomics, I'm ranking the quad fire in first place, the fang in second place, and the quadrot in third place. Round two! Details and design. Now this is subjective, but I am gonna try and be as objective as possible. Uh, this thing has like little to no detail, which is understandable. It's supposed to be a budget blaster, but still it's definitely getting last place because they have almost nothing to work with here. For the Quadrot, lots of details, really good design here. I think this blaster looks great. As for the Quad Fire, you have some detail, but it definitely could be improved upon. So for design and details, the Fang is getting last place, the Quad Fire is getting second place, and the Quadrot is getting first place. Right. Down three! Smoothness of operation. Because yes, these blasters have varying levels of quality. This also doubles as plastic quality, so let's go with that. Starting off with the quad fire, it does have a little bit of dead space in the middle, but for the most part, it does feel relatively solid. The T-pole is very smooth and the trigger pull feels very responsive and clicky, although the trigger itself could definitely use some work with the plastic spring. The Quadrot feels very, very good. Very thick plastic going all the way throughout, and it definitely has the smoothest T-pull out of all of them. The trigger also has a nice metal spring and is very responsive to the touch. The fang literally feels like it's going to fall apart every single second, and the trigger pull is as clunky as you can imagine. The T-pull feels super rough. That blaster literally feels like it's a ticking time bomb. Round four. Four. Tactical potential. So, yeah, this blaster has no tactical rails or attachments or anything at all. You really can't do anything with it. The Quadrot has a single rail up on the top, and the Quad Fire has a single rail on the bottom. So you would think that this blaster and this blaster would be tied. However, I'm going to give the extra point to the Quad Fire. Why? Because you're more likely to put a flashlight or something on this bottom rail than a scope on the top rail, considering these are small pistols. <laughs> Five, performance. Pretty straightforward, let's do the firing demo. So something important to note here is an inconsistency in the barrels. The quad fire and the fang both have the darts sticking out about this far, while the quadrat has the darts pushed in pretty far. Pretty interesting. We're gonna start with the fang first, then the quad fire, and then the quadrat.
Such reliability. Such wow. Now for the quad fire. And finally, the quad drop. Now let's take a look at the chronograph readings. So for performance, surprisingly, the Fang hit extremely hard at a top of 76.5. The quad fire hit the slowest at 69.2, and the quad rot was right in the middle at 70.1. Round six. Pretend that I have an extra finger. The price to value ratio. So the Quadrot costed $10 when it came out, the Fang costs $5, and the Quad Fire technically costs $20 because you have to get it in the loadout pack. Considering the other two blasters that come with the Quad Fire are the Technician and the worst Jolt reskin ever to curse this planet, I don't see any reason why you should waste the extra $10 just for the quality of the Quad Fire's grip. As for both of these two, it's kind of different because we're both in the $5 to $10 ratio. I personally see the Quadrot as a better value because because it's overall just a nicer feeling blaster, the darts fit further in, and it's very reliable. The Fang will work if you're just gonna use it for a day, but any longer than that, I don't recommend spending the extra money. And so with that, the ranking has been completed. The stack of darts behind the blasters have grown to their highest height, and I can say proudly, the Quadrot has won the competition. Congratulations, Quadrot. You are the least wasteful out of these three blasters. The Quad Fire in second place, and the Fang in third place. So thank you guys for watching. I will link all three of these blasters in the description below if you want to pick any of them up. With that said, subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below if you had to pick one of these, which one would you pick? And I'll see you all next time. Bye.